Hey guys, Meteor Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Friday Mountain Weather Update. All right, let's go up to Revelstoke again this morning. Another great day on tap. Looking at several inches of uh, new snow accumulation there, and you're not done. I've got additional moderate to heavy snow accumulation in my forecast for a lot of uh, Revelstoke. Um, let me take you up to Big Sky, and they're reporting another, they're reporting nine inches in the last 24 hours. You combine that with what they got yesterday at this time. I mean, they're over a foot in the last 48 hours, so I'm sure it's going to be outstanding skiing up there in uh, Revelstoke. Let's go to uh, Winter Park, Colorado. A little bit of new snow overnight. That that northwest flow squeezed out some light accumulations across parts of Colorado. And a couple of flurries coming down up here in uh, Big Cottonwood Canyon. Um, your better shot of snow comes in tonight into tomorrow. This is really just kind of uh, again, a little bit of moisture riding in on this northwest flow, a little bit of ore graphics, um, but you've got you've got actual moderate to heavy accumulation coming tonight into tomorrow. All right, let me take you back. I think I've got a I've got one more I want to do. Um, here's Jackson Hole reporting six inches of uh, new snow in the last 24 hours. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, the cameras, yep, it's cloudy, top of the mountain shrouded. Uh, Loveland reporting a couple of inches in Colorado of new snow. You can see it's it's still shrouded there. Um, you can see the lift that runs up to the Continental Divide is shrouded. Okay, let me show you radar. And it's really always interesting when you have these northwest flows. There's not a lot showing up on radar across uh, Wyoming, Utah, or Colorado. It's just a matter that the flow is so efficient. You know, a little bit of lifting, and we're gonna we're gonna wring out any moisture. Um, across these these mountain zones. But notice where the moisture is coming in, Washington, B.C., Oregon, and Northern California. That's where our next storm system is going to come from. That's where the rich flow is going to be maintained. Up in the northeast, you've got some wraparound. So there is a mix going on. There's a fight for, the, uh, <laughs> for who's going to get snow and who's going to get rain. But on the backside, it's cold enough that you've got that snow wrapping into the top of Jay Peak, a lot of Vermont. Northern New Hampshire, Mount Washington, northern, extreme northern uh, Maine. So you got some accumulation there. And I've got another shot down the road that we'll look at. Uh, let's talk about the water vapor. And this this is really going to tell the story. So in the low levels, your oranges and reds are your drier air. But the moisture is in the whites and the blues. And you can see this flow right here. I'll just use green. And there is your northwest flow component running down. So there's just a tiny bit of moisture being wrung out over the top of Wyoming, the Wasatch, and the central to northern mountains of Colorado. You can see the white coming down with that northwest flow. There's an actual storm system. You can see the spin up here and another big storm system back here. Now, as we go through in time, most of this moisture is going to hit the Pacific Northwest, BC, northern tier. We've got that kink in the flow that's going to come through tonight into tomorrow, early 23, for Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. And then after that, it's a whole different pattern. Let me show you my bullet points. So the active flow, like I said, northern tier, BC, Pacific, Northwest. This is the last wave to come through tonight, tomorrow, early 23 for Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Then a high pressure ridge is going to build in. Now, I'll tell you, looking at it this morning... The ridge itself looks brief, briefer. It does look strong for a time, but it may not last as long as, as I was thinking maybe the last couple of days. So if we can get it in late on the 23rd, it might be out by the 27th. That's still four solid days of high pressure, but at least we might be able to trim off one day. But it's going to do a number on the snowpack. <laughs> There's no question. Okay, here's my snow timeline. Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific, Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. Uh, these are the key dates for um, new snow. Um, so that you can kind of see the timing there for the Wasatch, Tetons, and Colorado. Um, you've got snow coming in in the Wasatch tonight through tomorrow, moderate to heavy. And those numbers have trended up just a little bit. In Colorado, mainly on the 22nd, moderate to heavy Tetons, light today, moderate to heavy 22, and then on 23. You know, and I should say, I mean, we're getting into that time of year. What's today? March 21st. That, you know, we're going to start to reach peak snowpack here very soon in a lot of the Rockies. And then we're going to start to see this 
this tug of war go on between the melt process. Uh, it'll come up from low elevations uh, and, and just gradually uh, go to higher elevations, but then also adding new snow. So that's a springtime thing. I mean, you know, that happens in April. We start to melt the snow away. Um, okay, let's drill down to Alta, Utah. And an interesting uh, forecast mediagram uh, here today with this. Let me uh, let me look and see where I've got this thing. Okay, this is effective about 9,000 feet. Now, the last couple of days I've been looking at this, so it's it's dry for the first time. I mean, you've got some flurries up there, some very light snow showers right now because you can look at the winds out of the northwest. But then your actual kink or storm system or wave comes in tonight into Saturday, the 22nd. Winds increase, and they, they turn out of the southwest, and then they back in from the west-northwest. Um, so that'll be pretty efficient once that happens. But this model today is up around a foot of snow accumulation. So those numbers have all gone up. This model's much more optimistic about generating heavier snow. And this is, again, Little Cottonwood Canyon, but pretty representative of Big and Little Cottonwood Canyon. Um, yesterday, I was thinking maybe about six inches. So I, I increased my numbers today to about eight. Um, but interesting to see this. Winds are going to gust to about 40. Uh, high temps today, 28. Tomorrow, 27. 29 on Sunday. Okay. Let me go to the jet stream forecast. So these are jet stream level winds up at about 30,000 feet. And a couple of things. I'm looking for the brighter colors. Those are going to be your stronger winds at 30,000 jet stream level. And these are the winds that steer storm systems around the globe. And I'm also looking for the dips in the jet, the kinks. Those are the areas of low pressure or fronts. You can see the kink up in the northeast, New England. That's that low moving through. Now, out west, you've got the west-northwest flow. And there are little pieces of energy riding that out of the Pacific Northwest through a lot of the Rockies. All right, here we are early on Saturday, March 22nd. Okay, here's early Sunday, March 23rd. Here comes the ridge of high pressure. You can see the arcing to the north of the jet stream. That's going to bottle up the cold air and build in above normal temps and drier than normal conditions across the west for about four days. Now, out east, you've got the, it's the seesaw. You've got the trough out there. So you're, you're colder out there in the northeast. Okay, here we are early Wednesday, March 26th. Okay, here we are on early March 27th. Now, look what's happening. We start to see the next trough or next area of low pressure move into the Pacific Northwest. Now, how far south does that go? Here we are early Friday, March 28th. So the ridge is gone at this point, essentially. That low has deteriorated and started to knock down those pressures. And you, this is early on Saturday, March 29th. So it's about four days worth of solid high pressure. Snow forecast accumulation over time. Light blues on this map are your lightest accumulations, three inches or less. Greens are three to six, yellows six plus, reds 10 plus. So there's your snow up in the northeast, some light accumulations, and your heavier snow, Washington State, BC, central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. Okay, here we are early on Saturday, March 22nd. Now, this is the next wave that's going to come through. And it hits uh, the Wasatch, it hits the Tetons, and it hits the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Of course, you've got snow upstream of that. Okay, here we are early on Sunday, March 23rd. That storm is largely gone from the Rockies. But still snowing hard in the Pacific Northwest, B.C., central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. Okay, a little bit of snow right there hitting the Tetons and Yellowstone. This is early Monday, March 24th, a little bit of snow kind of brushing the extreme northern mountains of Colorado. And then all that's gone. And now we're into high pressure across the west. Here's early Thursday the 27th. There's Friday the 28th. A little kink right here in the flow coming through. This is late on the 29th. So high pressure's done at this point, and you've got a storm moving through the Rockies. Okay, my numbers all of today through the 24th. So up to 8 inches now for the Wasatch, Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. About 10 up there in uh, the Tetons and Colorado. Not much of a change from yesterday, anywhere from um, 3 to 8 inches for the central to northern mountains. Uh, less in the southern mountains, nothing for northern New Mexico. Nothing for southern Utah, Arizona. And basically nothing for T Tahoe down to Mammoth, Big Bear. Central to northern Idaho does very well, 20 to 24 inches. 
Uh, but keep in mind, the warmer air, you're going to have a higher rain snow line. Montana, the big numbers are up in northwest Montana, closer to that rich flow. Keep in mind the higher rain snow lines. And the Pacific Northwest, anywhere from one to two, maybe two and a half feet. Interior BC, uh, maybe another 10 to 16 to go up there with a higher rain snow line, four to eight for BAMP sunshine. Okay, up in the Northeast, the numbers have gone up a little bit, especially in northern New Hampshire and parts of Maine. I'm up to a foot now in some of those places, looking at uh, lots of sixes and sevens through Vermont and four to five in upstate New York, and that runs through the 24th. Okay, we'll end on the big western map here through the 24th, and again, one more storm system to come through Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, then we're going to get into that high pressure ridge, so enjoy this uh, snow over the next uh, 24 to 60 hours for a lot of the inner mountain, but the flow stays very active for the Pacific Northwest, BC, and the northern tier. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.